Hi guys, it's Jennifer back again today with a fun little whimsy card featuring these super cute puppies from Mama Elephant in Hampton Arts. This was such a fun card to make. I love how the background turned out and I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's go ahead and get started making these darling little puppies. My first step was to die cut a circle. I'm just using a Spellbinders die and Nina Solar white cardstock and uh, use on my tabletop cutter. And now I've got my circle and I'm going to use my Misty. I find that these stamps that are the combination of Mama Elephant and Hampton Arts do require a couple of stamps so I always use a Misty with those. So I've got my first puppy and I'm just applying a uh, mask made out of a post-it note. And I know I wanted my puppies pretty close to look like they were holding hands so they can overlap. So there you can see I've got both puppies stamped and now I'm going to add a couple of little fine details. So I'm giving my puppy on the left a little mustache. So just <clears throat> line that up and use my memento, a couple of stamps there. And then next I'm going to give that same little guy a tiny little top hat. You can see I'm just going to line that up kind of at a jaunty angle. So again, just picking it up with my Misty, stamping, inking, and then stamping a little bit more just so you can't see the line of his head. And then next up, the puppy on the right, he's um, also quite a dapper gentleman and will get a teeny tiny little bow tie. So just put that in place. And then my bow tie fell off of my Misty, so I had to run around and search for it. So I'm redoing that again. Put my bow tie on, pick it back up, and then I'm going to ink it with the black ink. A couple of um, stamps. And the two ink applications was sufficient for this little guy. So now, at this point, I am going to ink the background. So I am cutting out a second mask using that post-it note. And I'm just going to stamp it on there. I really like <clears throat> using the post-it notes because the paper is so thin and easy to work with and small little pieces. And so I'm, my first step, I'm cutting out the little teeny tiny top hat, which in hindsight, I probably didn't really need to do because I'm going to apply blue ink and you can't really see that through the top hat, but I'm just being thorough. So I'm going to apply my little top hat. I'm using my um, EK Success tweezers. I love these. They're reverse tweezers, and I couldn't I couldn't work without them. So I'm just going to cut out my little mask there. And when I cut a mask, I try to get just ever so slightly on the inside of the black line. And then that way, um, one thing I, I'm don't like is when I leave a white line around a mask. This is why I'm not using the included die cuts because those all have um, kind of a border around them. And so they would have a white area around them, which if that's what you like, totally do that. But I just kind of wanted them to have a different look. So now I'm going to reapply the die that I used to cut out my initial circle. And I'm going to grab some spare washi tape and I'm just going to tape this down. And this, the idea is that this should help it, but I really should have done is tape it from the back as well because it does kind of slide around. And I'm going to start with the salty ocean, but um, as you can see, I, we kind of make it work. Sometimes I think that's what art is really about is how do you correct um, or cover or work with your mistakes. So um, everything is sliding around, so I just kind of took it off. You can see it's not a perfect circle, so I'm just reapplying that die and then using that to create an additional frame. And I am really feeling this salty ocean. I love the color. So then I pull up my mask and you can see I did a pretty good job of getting those cut really close to my lines. And now I'm going to jump right into coloring. I'm going to start with uh, B4 and I'm going to do the puppy on the right. And he kind of has this patchwork work look to him, and I wanted to have it look like similar shades of fabric but different tonal values. So I'm just going to apply my darker shade on his body first. 
And then I'm going to use this B26 because I knew I wanted his ears to be um, darker than his body. So I'm just going to do the dark shade first and then come back in with that mid-tone, which is the B24. And if you follow me or you've watched any of my videos, I am really working on being a better Copic colorer. And now we're going to the B21. So I'm trying a few different techniques and trying to not overblend, which I am certainly guilty of. Uh, but I love Copic markers, and I feel like these little whimsy stamps, they work so great with them because you get a really, can get a really vibrant pop of color. And one thing that I like about Copics is if you go back over an area more than once, uh, that darkens the value. So that what that allows me to do is come in on a couple of those specific areas, say here on where I'm coloring that left eye and the little spot on the right, and just adding an additional layer of that ink gives it a darker look. And there we go, my little blue um, dog. I keep wanting to call him a blue bunny, but he's a dog. My blue dog is complete. And then at this point, I was trying to decide and settled on green for my little guy on the left. So I'm going to do that same process. Here I'm going to use uh, YG03, 06, and 07. And basically the same process, starting with my darkest value on his ears, just so that they're darker than his body. And then my mid-tone, which is the YG06. And then I'm going to use that as my darker shade on his body. With stamps this small, um, a lot of times people use uh, three shades, and I like to use three shades, but these were pretty small. And like I said, I'm really working on not over blending and I um, wanted to keep it fairly simple. So I just went with uh, two shades on the body. And just working in my shading, blending. And then coming back again with another coat in those specific spots to make them a little bit darker. And so I'm going to, you saw me point there, his mustache didn't stamp that well. And so I'm just going to come back in with the Copic 100 and just fill it in. And then I'm going to add just little gray noses and that's a W5 for their noses and they are finished. The next step I am going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment and again just using the Tuxedo Black Memento ink and my Misty and then a scrap of white cardstock and then I trimmed that down for really fine detail I use that tabletop guillotine cutter And then I was looking for my circle again because I wanted to cut out a frame. So um, this is how I keep my scrap paper in by color in uh, the smaller pieces in these just Ziploc bags and it works fantastic. So I've got this bright blue and I'm cutting out that larger circle to be a mat. And then when I put my scraps back, if I think I can't use a really tiny part, you saw I just cut it off there. It just uh, makes it easier for me to work with. And then I'm going to adhere my sentiment to a piece of black cardstock. And then again, using my tabletop guillotine cutter. I have a really large guillotine cutter, but for anything under an inch, I usually use that top one or the tabletop one. So a little bit of ATG and then now it's on to the background and I'm going to start with Shabby Shutters, Twisted Citron and the um, Salty Ocean and just using the ink blending tool and applying my color around my panel and I loved the way these three colors worked together. The Twisted Citron is a really strong vibrant green and I felt like it just gave this that pop of whimsy that it needed. I'm just working on gradually adding up 
the color value. And then I'm going to use a stencil. This is from Mr. Huey and it is called the V Pattern Mask. And I'm just applying a little bit of the Salty Ocean and this is not centered. I definitely did that on purpose and I'm trying to feather it out so I don't have hard lines on the edge but you can see it went a little bit over on the right hand side so I'm just going to add a little bit of extra color there kind of to de-emphasize it and throw a little bit of water on let that react and we're reacting and you can actually see the dots kind of pull up so I thought I was going to use this bright green card stuck but once I kind of um picked up my dots or dried off my dots, it was a little too bright. So I changed my mind and I went with still a bright green, but just not quite so day glow. And I thought it worked really well with the background. So I'm just gonna trim my inked panel down just a little bit. Cause I initially didn't have a plan. So that was uh, started out as a quarter sheet. So then I'm just gonna um, add that to my background. And then I'm going to put my stamp panels. Now, as I mentioned, that stencil was not centered. So I found that I was having a little bit of trouble eyeballing the center of my card because that V kind of wanted to pull it. So I'm just using my Tim Holtz ruler to find the center. Adhered my sentiment and then adding my stamped puppies. And I really thought I was done, but I added some adhesive gems from Hero Arts. These are round, so not faceted. And I love this quick stick for this sort of application. I use it to separate the gems from each other and then you can easily pick them up. And added a little bit of detailing with a Twisted Citron Distress Marker. But it wasn't, it wasn't sparkly enough. So I came back in with some Firefly Stickles, which is this fantastic, really bright green, and just a touch of it, and it looked fantastic over the Twisted Citron. And that was it. This puppy was finished, and I love how it turned out. I really like this stamp set, and of course, that means I need to go and do some more shopping. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and visit me at jenniferminer.com. Thanks.